No, these sonnets are not about the Asgard of the Marvel Universe uh, comics and movies, although they are about their original source, uh, the good old myths of Norse legends. Now, actually, the good old myths as we have them may not be that old, aside from the occasional artifact, uh, like this runestone here. Uh, we are dependent on sources from a time when the old religion was already on the wane and had been subject to the influence of Roman mythology and then Christianity. Our best sources are the prose Edda and the poetic Edda, which come from 13th century Iceland. And references also abound in the sagas, which also tend to be medieval and are often from Iceland. And nothing against Iceland, which is a gorgeous and rather admirable country, and, but it was a far western outpost of Norse culture. Now, actually, the good old myths have a lot of variations, uh, even in names, especially on the frontier between the northern Germanic, uh, that is to say Norse, and general Germanic myths and legends. The chief god in the Norse Asgard, Odin, is also in his Germanic form, uh, Woden, or Woden, and thus the god of Wednesday, that is Woden's Day. Uh, readers of Neil Gaiman's American Gods who catch the connection. Now, Odin is a fierce warrior and a patron of berserkers, seeming to love war for its own sake. Although a king in Asgard, Odin also leaves it often to wander the earth in search of knowledge and power. To obtain wisdom, he pawned one of his eyes. On the other hand, uh, the mead of poetry he simply stole from its original owner, thus becoming the patron of all bards and skalds. Now that's the background you need really to understand the following sonnet, which is otherwise a fairly conventional love poem. At Mimmer's well, great Odin gave his eye the wisdom of the world he thus would gain. Now that's a bargain I would never buy, to know the world can only mean more pain. The mead of poetry he also stole, and if that theft I could but emulate, with poems I'd so enwrapped your very soul to love me too and cease to hesitate. I have not Odin's wisdom nor his tongue, but I rejoice that my two eyes have known your beauty greater than the bards have sung. I've mind enough to bow before your own. Though you are fit for any god of yore, I swear no god could ever love you more. One place in which Christian influence is suspected, at least by some, is in the story of Ragnarok, a kind of apocalypse when the gods will have a final showdown with their traditional enemies, the giants, along with various monsters and accompanied by various natural disasters. Now, in the ensuing battle, just about everybody dies. Uh, the uh, illustration shows uh, Odin fighting Fenris, a, a monster wolf, uh, and the spawn, of the trickster god Loki. Uh, now Odin will eventually be swallowed whole by Fenris. Now, fortunately, a new world is born from the old one's ashes, and one man and one woman survive. So the story will begin again. Now here's the sonnet. In Ragnarok, the gods themselves will die when Odin swallowed whole by Loki's son, and wounded Thor in death on earth must lie. And yet my love for you will still live on. The stars will vanish and the sun turn black. The earth will burn and sink into the sea. But though the world's transformed by fire's attack, no fire can change how dear you are to me. And when the earth shall rise to second birth, 
The fields will grow untended, stocked with game. New men, new gods will walk upon the earth. Through constant change, my love will stay the same. Since it will last while all things pass away, you cannot doubt my love is true today. As part of his quest for knowledge, Odin hung himself for nine days from the great world tree Yggdrasil, becoming the prototype of all human sacrifices, but thus attaining knowledge of the runes of power. Now the world tree is tended by three Norns, who care for it so that when this world and its gods and their enemies perish in a final great struggle, the tree will give shelter to Leif and Leithrasser, the Adam and Eve of the new world to come. The Norns that tend the tree are female beings roughly equivalent to the three fates of Greek mythology, in that they spin out the fate of gods and men. But these are, in fact, uh, just the main Norns. There are a bunch of other Norns scattered about, many of them connected with fate. Norns attend our birth, for example, uh, presumably to settle our fate. This next sonnet, for example, was meant to be. My dear, they say that three great Norns attend the sacred tree Yggdrasil, on which for nine long days and nights great Odin hung, that then he'd gain the power of every runic sign. They bring fresh water to its roots, so when the world and gods themselves come to an end, Leif and Lithrasser may shelter find within, and then create new humankind. But there are Norns that tell our fate at birth, and though some Norns are born of gods, they say that others spring from dwarves beneath the earth, or some born when two elves may procreate, and human Norns that we might meet some day. You are my Norn, and loving you, my fate. Every good mythology has to have a deity devoted to love and sex, and in Norse mythology, Freya fills the bill. She also has a warlike side. Uh, she presides over half of the warrior uh, dead as a hostess, uh, the remaining ones going to Odin's better-known Valhalla. Now, as a goddess, of course, she has various accessories, like Thor has a hammer. In Freya's case, one of the most important is a feathered cloak, which, when used, can behave as a sort of love potion. Well, her husband is Odra, a rather vague deity whose name recalls that of Odin, and he may be a double of Odin. Uh, his name means mind or sense or song, and Odin is, after all, the patron god of bards. For that matter, Freya may be a double of Odin's wife, Frigg. Now, in addition to the various spellings and pronunciations of Freya, she has a bunch of other names as well. Now, all this illustrates the rather fluid character of Norse myth. Even so, a goddess of love and sex is always good for a love sign. Freya, beauty's goddess, wife of song, you must be my woman's patron deity, so beautiful above the rest is she. So help me sing her praise, for whom I long. Freya, since o'er love you also rule, extend your feathered robe and cloak o'er me, and make my loved one grant the fervent plea of one who has become love's willing fool. Then, Freya, patron of attained desire, assist my manhood in the act of love, Till deep within the flesh I'm dreaming of, her body burns with satisfying fire. For fire already in my veins does dwell. O oh, Freya, help me serve my lover well. Well, with that final hope, I will leave you. My name's Bob Canary, 
Uh, I wouldn't take anything I've said about Norse mythology as authoritative, not because I've been deliberately wrong, but because you can't trust anything you read or hear on the internet. And thanks for listening.